Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the next uh, session, which is all about mobile game uh, genres. Uh, greetings from uh, Helsinki, Finland. Um, let me just first share my screen so that um, you'll be able to see the presentation that I'm going to show you. Excellent. So um, here we go. Um, so today's topic is mobile game genres are dead, along with the new genres. So we're going to be talking about the game friendly approach to uh, game categorization uh, in the mobile games. Uh, but before uh, we hop on to the actual topic, um, I think it might be useful to just uh, uh, give you a brief intro to who I am. So my name is uh, Kalle Heikne, uh, and I work at Gamefine as a senior analyst, mainly focusing on keeping our database of Chinese games uh, as up-to-date and as comprehensive uh, as uh, possible. So my job description actually helps <laughs> do have to i get to play actually a lot of free to play mobile games so uh, i would say i do have a decent understanding of uh, what's going on in different geographical markets and in, in different genres especially when it comes to the the, the chinese mobile game market um and then uh, just a brief intro to game of finery if there's still who's not that familiar with uh, what we do so Game Refinery is the leading mobile game state company providing feature level data. Nowadays, we also have offerings for things like data, demographics data, motivation data, and so on. But uh, sort of the main focus or the other what we do is, is the, uh, and what makes us unique is the, is the feature level uh, data. So um, we analyze games to our database. And nowadays we have a huge database of game analysis, uh, over 3,000 analysis in our, in our database. So from, from that database, we're then able to extract interesting data points uh, concerning, for example, which features are trending, which markets or which features are differentiating games in, in, in different genres or different geographical markets. But to move on uh, to the topic uh, at hand, which is the genre classification and uh, and uh, genre categorization, um, we for a long time have been looking at the market, and, and what we've seen is that uh, there hasn't really been uh, an efficient way to categorize mobile games. So uh, we set out on a path. Uh, to solve that uh, problem. So why does our industry then need new genre taxonomy? Of course, it's a question that we ask ourselves uh, many times. Uh, and to answer that, uh, we could, for example, think about the point that it's very, very important to understand what's going on in the market. And, uh, for your own game, it's it's crucial to know the competitive landscape surrounding your your own game, and genre of course plays a significant factor in in that equation. So, for example, we just recently conducted a, a study with Facebook Gaming, and and, and the finding we got out of that research that genre is actually one of the top factors uh, when it comes to gamers making decisions on which game they will start playing uh, next. So genres are definitely very, very important. And in terms of mobile games, this holds especially uh, true as the range of different kinds of games is very, very big. And if we want to then understand, for example, uh, like what is the market the size for our product that we're uh, maybe we are in the in the sort of category research phase? Uh, it's very important to be able to make meaningful categorization. At the moment, um, there's no really good 
questions for this for you think about the uh, apple app store genres be very confusing and vague at times and they overlap and so on so here you can see just a couple of examples for example if we zoom into the right hand side picture over here we can see that under action we have games like rage at all like this turn-based rpg we have Command and Conquer Rivals, which is a tactical battler, and Arena of Valor, which is a mobile game. And all these games are very, very different if you think about their uh, game mechanics and, and the, even the audience that plays these different kinds of games. So after identifying that there really is a need for a solution to this problem, we then started thinking about that, uh, what kind of genre attacks we want to build. And with three different uh, key requirements for that genre taxon. The first thing we wanted to, wanted to address is coverage. So the variety of game types at the, in the market is, is huge. So the genre taxonomy that we would be constructing would have to cover the market it's all diversity. Second prerequisite to say is flexibility. So the mobile game market is always shifting and evolving. So it needs to be a taxonomy where we can remove genres if they become irrelevant and add new genres if new genres become popular and trending and, 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 and so forth. For example, five years ago, if we had done this uh, taxonomy, I don't think we would have included, for example, Battle Royale games. But in 2020, that's just something that you need to take into account for categorizing uh, games into the mobile game market. And then the third one is level of detail. So to provide insights that they make sense, uh, taxonomy of course, has to be detailed enough so that you can differentiate games in a meaningful, meaningful way. But of course, uh, if you go too detailed, uh, that can be can be a bad thing too. So, so for example, uh, if you have a sub genre that has a representation of, let's say, two games, and you look at the data, the data says that okay, fifty percent of games sub genre. Uh, have guild mechanics, but the sample size is two games. So one game has guild mechanics. So is, is that going to give you the kind of meaningful uh, information and data to proceed? Probably not. So uh, keeping that in mind, we then started building up the taxonomy and we came up with is a three layered approach to categorize. Uh, and the top layer that we have in the taxonomy, category layer. So in the category layer, layer we have different categories. We have casual games, mid-core games, casino games, and sports and crime. The casual mid-core, you can see there, uh, translates into the differentiation between so-called simple and uh, complex games. We also wanted to distinguish casino and sports and drive into their own categories as they uh, have rather the different game mechanics and uh, player profiles. So we, uh, we thought that uh, it would make sense for the taxonomy to have their, the, 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 those categories separated from casual and micro. If we go down, step down in the taxonomy to a bit deeper level, then we arrive at the genre uh, level. So uh, inside casual, we have six different genres. We have LB, hypercasual, arcade, puzzle, lifestyle, and simulation. In midcore, we have four genres, shooter, RPG, car games, and strategy. Casino is casino and sports and driving is sports and driving respectively. So we thought that in a, on a genre level, this kind of uh, segmentation would be optimal uh, for the needs of the taxonomy. 
Then the deeper level, the deepest, is the genre level in our um, taxonomy because the categories and genres they're good if you're doing just high level research. We want to for example, compare turn based RPGs and let's say action RPGs before. Uh, in let's say Ch Chinese market, for example, you want to do research on that subject, then uh, genre level is just not enough. Um, but the sub genre level gives you the tools to assess uh, the uh, depth of uh, this kind of uh, needed for this kind of uh, research. We have currently 52 of these uh, sub genres in the taxonomy. You can see them listed out on. And sign. Uh, and if we go to the T3 uh, requirement that we see, uh, it put up for, for the taxonomy, we can, we can see that the solution that we came up with actually uh, addresses all these three uh, prerequisites. So the taxonomy does cover the market well as. Pretty much all the games can be pinpointed into one category, genre, subgenre combination. Um, it's also flexible because we are able to add new subgenres if that's, but also remove subgenres if they are irrelevant and the data just doesn't back up the decision to keep it there. And it's also giving us uh, a sufficient level of detail and capturing the diverse nature of the mobile games uh, market. So you you can do comparisons between, for example, customization and music band game if you, if you want. So next up, I then like to um, just give you exa an example, or actually a couple of examples how we can use utilize this uh, genre taxonomy in, in, in practice. And for the sake of this example, we're going to be taking a closer look at uh, RPG uh, and RPGs subgenres. So first, let me just go briefly through the different RPG subgenres that we have in this taxonomy so that, the, so that you get a better idea of, uh, of how they differ from, from each other. So the first one that we have here is action RPG. Um, so in these kinds of games, you usually control one hero character at a time. There's real time combat uh, where player skills uh, play a rather big uh, uh, role, as well as uh, characters' power progression. Um, Restricted world meaning that you go from one level to another level to progress. Uh, in the main progression path. And the meta side of things focuses on being a limited character. And RPGs, in these games, you have this massive open world uh, where you can explore, do missions, interact with the game, interact with other players, and so on. Um, in the West, you usually control a single character, or the main focus is on. on controlling a single character, but in China we also have MMRPGs where you're actually um, developing and controlling several characters at a, at a time. Um, in the West, MMOs corollary is usually using real-time combat. Uh, again, in China we also see this combat. Uh, and the character development aspect uh, in the West usually focuses on uh, developing a single character, whereas in the in, in China we also have these MMOs where you have this uh, a bit larger roster that you are developing. Then fighting games, um, yeah, uh, so I forgot to give you a couple of examples. So, for example, Mar Marvel Future Fight would be an example of an action RPG, and Black Desert Mobile, for example, would be an example of an MMO. For example. And but then uh, fighting. Um, in these games, players control one character at a time, it's real time fighting in a restricted world, so you go from one level to another, uh, and you usually have a rather large character roast, roaster in the game. Marvel Contest of Champions is a pretty classic example of a mobile, uh, mobile uh, fighting game. 
Then we have turn-based RPGs. Uh, in these games, you control several several characters at a time. You have turn-based combat, and um, in, the game happens in a restricted uh, world. Uh, and on the meta side, you have a rather large character roster. And the last three subgenres, first of all, we have your special RPG. So special RPGs usually uh, are, they sort of match up, uh, match three things with uh, RPG uh, meta layer. Uh, in these games, you control several different at the time, you have turn combat, uh, have a wide character roster. Survival games are both most niche subgenre that we have here. You have one character, your character that you're controlling, real-time combat, massive open world, and a character that focuses usually on, on a single character. And then the latest addition uh, to our genre uh, taxonomy, actually, we added this, I think, or something, RPGs in these games. These games are similar to RPGs, but the sort of difference is that you have the other mechanic playing also which are able to even when they're uh, the game. All right, um, so just a brief to different subgenres. And as you can see, all these subgenres are from each other, so it makes sense to have them in separate. Um, Subgenre. So, if you want to research just other RPGs or just puzzle RPGs, that's entirely possible with a solution like this. Um, then, how you can then utilize these uh, genres or subgenres in in, term, in, in conducting market research? Um, first, let's take a look at the genre level. So, I'll be comparing the markets of the US. Japan and China, uh, and we'll be comparing the uh, the RPG market shares in these three geographical markets. Uh, I want to just uh, emphasize here: we're looking at the top 500 crossing games on iOS only, and we're looking at Q2 of this year. And below this uh, pie chart, you also can see uh, 2019 Q2. The difference between Year on year, difference between uh, 19Q2 and uh, 20Q2. Uh, so, starting from the US market, we can see that RPG genre has a uh, 13% revenue market share uh, of the market. If we compare the situation to Japan, we can see that RPG holds 51%, and in China, uh, the same number. Um, if we look at the change, year-on-year change, probably the most interesting thing is the decrease of RPGs market share in China. You can see that it has a little more than 7.5% uh, decline uh, in, in the market. So this is just an example of, uh, of the data that you can then get if you have uh, a genre taxonomy like this. Then we can go to subgenre level to exactly the same kind of research, but this time we are zooming in to the subgenre level. So now we're looking at inside the RPG genre. So how big of um, revenue market share do different RPG subgenres have inside um, RPG? So here we can see that in the US market, turn-based RPGs have 52% um, the revenue market share. Uh, Bustle RPGs have 20%, fighting has 10%, and, uh, and so on. Um, something to note here is the small market size, size is for action RPGs and MMOs, which is interesting. You can also see that turn based RPGs were the biggest year on the market increased 10% during this time frame. Um, when it comes to the Japanese markets, turn-based RPGs are also the biggest RPG subgenre here, uh, and puzzle RPGs in the in the second place. Um, and year-on-year, 
evidence shows that uh, possible RPGs uh, revenue market share decreased five percent in, in Japan during the uh, this time frame. Then in China, it's pretty different situation. Here we have MMOs at fifty one percent, which is quite huge if you compare the Chinese situation with fifty one percent to US, which has six percent. Uh, uh, revenue market size inside RPG for, for MMORPGs. So um, quite distinctive difference here. And something in, that's also interesting is to note the very, very small uh, market size for puzzle um, RPGs and fighting games. So they are non-existent in the market crossing things in China. And also, um, if we look at the biggest uh, year on year uh, mover, we can see that MMOs, even though it is still definitely the biggest RPGs of China, MMOs, the new market share actually decreased 17% during the during this uh, time frame. And that can uh, actually be attributed mostly to other subgenres just gaining um, traction and eating uh, away MMOs. Uh, Revenue market share. So, for example, idle RPGs have been uh, have increased their revenue market share in significantly during this time frame. Um, and then the last uh, example uh, is that you can zoom into Zatronic uh, that you're interested in. So, let's say that you are uh, in the turn based RPG space. You can, for example, check out okay how much revenue in, in a time frame interested in the turn based RPGs make. So for example in Q2 in the US they make seven percent of all the revenue. Then you can zoom in inside turn based RPGs and take a look at actual games and see uh, what kind of which games are the top dots inside that sub uh, subgenre and you can here we can see that five turn based RPGs um, made approximately 45% of all revenues in Q2 2020. And then you can also feature levels. So as I promised in the beginning of this presentation, when I talked about the refinery, uh, we're all about features. So that's definitely something um, unique to our, our service. So you can then take a look at turn-based RPGs and see what kind of game mechanics, game features, seem to be trending, seem to be differentiating, seem to be popular. And for example, here we can find a data point that shows, that, shows us that uh, when it comes to uh, non-competitive co-op tasks, uh, communal feature, we can see that all the top 100 tempest RPGs are present this feature. But only 32% uh, of games outside top 100 are doing that. So in other words, it would look like that this particular feature uh, is, is a differentiating feature between the best performing TDRPGs and the TDRPGs that have not been able to find that much success. So to give you a summary of what I've talked about this far, um, a new genre taxonomy is definitely something um, that is needed for our industry in order to map out uh, the ever evolving um, free play mobile game space in uh, as efficient manner as possible. And what we came up with uh, is this three layered approach where we have category level on top and comes to genre level. So, on category level, for example, mid core, on genre level, for example, RPG. And then on general level, you can also you can zoom zoom in even to subgenres such as turn-based RB or MMORPGs. And this taxonomy definitely gives you a significantly better way to research your competition, research your audience, and market in general. And that all then translates into making better decisions in all phases of the development life cycle and across the entire company, no matter the discipline. All right.
Um, thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, I will now to look at the Q uh, panel. We're happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about Game Refinery, strongly recommend to check out GameRefinery.com. Uh, um, if you have any questions uh, about the presentations or right, basically anything <laughs> about what I've what I talked about just now, you can also send me email after this uh, uh, this presentation. So uh, the email uh, is is visible here. So collect.hakenandgamerefinery.com. Oh, but yeah, um, already want to say uh, thank you for for listening to the presentation, and now I'll be checking the the questions that you might might have. Let's see. Mm, feeling of there being too much information or overall too much complexity. Mostly the activity and MMOs and mobile, do you think those genres should try to adapt either to a mobile game setting by being more simple or approaching the world in the game differently uh, somehow? Maybe even have more mobile-specific MMO subgenre. Hey, that is actually a very uh, good uh, Question. I think something that everyone has been talk uh, thinking about for a long time is that why um, animals haven't been able to find much success in the in the West, whereas in markets such as China, the situation um, definitely very much a different. Maybe this one solution could be that there sh there should be sort of. Um, more simple approaches you are uh, suggesting maybe maybe that could be the key the 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 MMOs that are that originate from from asian markets they are very very complex and complicated especially when it comes to the ui and ux design and that might be a put off for many uh, people in the west um so i think in terms of like uh ui for sure uh i think that 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 there's definitely room for um uh, room for improvement um uh so yeah i don't know if i answered your question um but that would be how i would uh approach approach that and have a more mobile specific mmo of course, it's possible to also make a more general approach with the MMOs. So, so have different kinds of MMOs, so turn-based MMOs, action RPG MMOs, and idle RPG MMOs, and those would have their own subgenres. So that definitely could be one approach to to take as well. Um, uh, if there are no uh, other questions, I just want to thank you for participating in this uh, session and uh, have a very nice rest of the conference. Bye-bye.